Hello. My name is Mario Deontay Touch. They call me Prime. I'm a pastor. So they call me Pastor Prime. I'm a martial artist with students under me. So they call me Master Prime. But Lord Jehovah calls me Lord Prime. Third generation. And I'm here to explain all. So pay attention. As you see, I sit under old phone two bottles. So there's no doubt I am lying. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. He created Adam and Eve. First Adam, and from Adam came Eve. They were created in his image. Meaning, they were created with bodies like his. Now, Adam, when he was created, was responsible for naming every animal on the planet. And then, after he was done, and he had a wife, Eve, that their focus was to go forth and multiply across the planet. But, something happened. In the Garden of Eden, there was a tree that had the knowledge of good and evil. And here's the thing. Something happened that had never happened before in the garden. An animal spoke. A snake spoke. Not to Adam, but to Eve. And when the snake spoke, knowing when the tree was there, to eat from it was sin. God told him, if you eat of this tree, you surely will die. But that's just the thing. Adam told Eve. But here's the thing. The snake told Eve when she he asked of the tree, would they die? And she said they would. And he said, you will not die. You will be like God. Knowing good. And Eva. And he lied to her. And by that lie, Eve ate the fruit. And by eating it, it went into her stomach and into her digestive tract and then into her bloodstream. Knowing good and evil. And she persuaded Adam to eat of the fruit too, knowing that it was good for food. So when he ate it, he had knowledge of good and evil in his bloodstream, basic biology. And then, because of that, because of the act of sin, he was separated from God, having knowledge of things that God did not yet tell him. His father. And from that, for so many generations, death has come. Before eating that fruit, they would have never died. That truly, they grew forth and multiplied and gathered around the planet. Fortunately, God knew they were so evil that it could never be with them. That when they tried to go to heaven, building the Tower of Babel, he knew, since they were all able to communicate with each other, that they needed to have be separated. And when they separated, those who spoke the same language as them went to certain areas. That's what created nations. But because they were so evil, he thought to destroy them all. Not all, just all of the evil. And notice there was Noah, who 
he declared was righteous because he followed and obeyed him. And by that, he, his, he gave him the responsibility of mass producing on the earth after the flood. Now you have questions, not answers. That an ark is about the size of a football field. That land-based animals only, knowing that carnivores tend to hibernate. That only two of each kind of land-based animals gathered onto the ark, ordered by God. And all the carnivores ate their physical body weight or higher and hibernated on the ark. Now you know. Now, after the flood, when land was found, after 40 days and 40 nights of rain, that they went, they found that land and realized they were, it was under them. So, since they were in a new territory, it is only natural that they disassembled the ark simply for shelter, to make homes. In an ark, the size of a pretty much a football field or arena, would pretty much make a small village or town. And then after that, he entered a covenant with God, and God promised he would never destroy the earth again. Then, I come from the line of Noah. But, over time, God tried to intercede in create a race of children that were of his bloodline. And he did so through one being that was righteous, Abraham. And through Abraham came a nation. That it was assumed that Abraham didn't have the ability to even have children when Isaac was born. And you wonder, since the wages of sin is now death, it was said in Leviticus well, 17 that to atone for certain sins, they had to sacrifice animals. But the beetle blood wasn't pure. That's why it had to be poured out to purify it. But Isaac, Isaac's blood was pure. It came from God. He would have been a sacrifice to atone for all sin. The sin of Adam. But Abraham couldn't go through with it. God showed him mercy and from that 14 generations pass until King David. And from 14 generations from King David, 14 generations pass to the exile of Babylon. And from 14 generations from the exile of Babylon came Christ, who was not born of a man that was deemed righteous, but through the Holy Spirit by God himself. Having pure blood. Knowing that Abraham's line, the blood was pure, but Sarah's blood was not pure, many of them went into the bone. From Christ, it's been 14 generations, roughly about 2,000 years. From his death and resurrection, proving that he could live through any of it. To now. Now, some people have questions that are hard to, that they never understood as children. Like, you know, Jonah. And so many people have seen Pinocchio. Why is it not likely that Jonah was swallowed by a well? And through the blowhole, since they breathe oxygen, he was able to live for three days. That, that's pretty much everything. So, that's really the Bible in a nutshell. Knowing that when the Ten Commandments were made in the line of Abraham, that so many people had sinned, so much death had come before and after that moment. That through Christ, since his blood was pure, and he stood as a living sacrifice just like Isaac to his tone for the sin of Adam and all sin. And when he did this, 
by his name, using his prayer, you are able to repent. Ask prayer on his name. And by his name, all are able to be saved. But unfortunately, during the time when the Ten Commandments were written, those after Abraham created rules and regulation that really annulled the word of God, you know, watered it down. That they honored traditions, but not the commandments directly, or what God has said directly. So they did it again in the time of Christ. That they put word in that was not said by him to actually give justification and rules on how to live when he explained it all. That in Matthew chapter 5 through chapter 7 summed up Oh no man nothing. If they take from you, ask from you, give. If they wish to take from you, give double. That you are required to pray, give, and fast in secret. For God will see it. But it was not meant for all mankind to witness. That we have been able to create. That is our treasure. And our ideas were meant to be given as prayer to Christ. To be received by Lord Jehovah. Where it was said. To walk with Christ. Is to follow Lord Jehovah. And that is his father. And because of that. That's pretty much everything. So if there's any questions. I know. There aren't. Explain it all. Let those who have ears, let them hear. Let those who have eyes, let them see.